our great helper. Every human being needs help. Human beings. Human beings are creatures created to depend on help. But the greatest commandment, the second greatest commandment, according to Matthew chapter 22, from verse 37, the verse 37 to 40, Jesus was teaching the two greatest commandments of God. He said, it's the first one is to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, your strength. Then he said the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. He said these are two greatest commandments upon which the law, all the law and the prophets depend. Only these two. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. The, the love is a deed. It's not just because you have a mouth to declare that you love somebody. It's what you are doing for the person. Because everybody needs help. If somebody is very poor and you tell him that God should, or her that God should bless the person, you have done nothing. Try to find something for the person. That's love. So James was saying that in James chapter 2, he said that if somebody comes in the midst of the breeding and he's very destitute, he doesn't have money, and some of you say to me, oh, go, go and do well, stay blessed. He said, he say, and you will fail to give him anything for his day. You have done nothing. You want God to bless somebody who is very hungry. How? Feed the person. John chapter 3 is saying that whosoever has the world's goods and sees his brother suffering and close his eyes. So where is the love of God in the person? Why? Because human beings were created to be cared for by family, by friends, by uh, a spouse, by children, by his state, his own country, by his church. Human beings were created to depend on the help of others, our fellow human beings. That's why we conceive in the womb for nine months. When we come out, somebody has to take care of us for eight, before until we are 18 years. Even sometimes, till we die. Because when people get old, they still need people to help them, to clean them, just like babies. But I'm going to teach you something your great helper and how don't let satan deceive you your great helper jesus said in matthew chapter in john chapter 14 from verse 15 he said if you love me keep my commandments if you love me keep my commandments ask yourself what commandment is that what's the commandment jesus is talking about here if you love me keep my commandments Started from John chapter 13, from verse 34, 35 coming, 33, 34, 35, John chapter 13. So it's a new commandment I give you to love one another as I have loved you. So that commandment is love. The other one is a belief in God and belief also in me. That's John chapter 14, verse 1. So verse 13, uh, chapter 13 of John, he put down a new commandment. Chapter 14, verse 1, he put down another commandment, believe in me. So love one another as I have loved you and believe in me. In fact, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 23, he said the commandment of the Father, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his name. But here Jesus is saying my commandment. And that commandment is to love one another as he has loved you. He gave his life to you. It was a deed. He didn't stay, stay in heaven and say, Oh guys, I love you. I love you guys. No. He gave himself. And some people, people will take, teach you that, Oh, to love God means, since he gave Jesus, you also give your money. That's nonsense. God doesn't need your money. It's your brother who needs the money. 
If you say you love God but you don't love your brother, what's the sense in it? God does not need your tithes. It is your brother who needs the tithes. In the old covenant, the tithes were collected not from poor people and widows and orphans. The tithe is collected was collected from the rich. Why? It was the tax of God before Israel asked for kingdom to, to ask for kings. And then he told them in, in, in Samuel, the book of Samuel, first Samuel, that you are asking for the king. That king is going to tax you and abuse you and take your land from your hand. Because God protested against even that. But before they were the the God king, God put the tithe there as tax. And the tax, every country, every nation collect tax because of the citizens to provide social amenities, infrastructure for the citizens. If a government collects tithes and he's abusing the tithe, it's called a corrupt government. And that government, the people will rise against that government. So, if anybody is collecting tithes, he has to understand that Malachi said, bring all the tithes so that there will be food in my house for people to get food to eat. Just the same as how we collect taxes. So, if anybody is collecting tithes from you, you have to expect that he is going to use the tithe to take care of you. Other than that, he's a corrupt person. That person is corrupt and deceiving, deceiving your life. Because in your own country where you come from, if your government collect the taxes and use them for themselves and never consider any one of you, they use them to build their own houses or mansions, buy their private jets and then educate their own children and they never care for you. You rise against them. You tell them that they are corrupt. Since you are telling your government that they are using your money unjudiciously to uh, cater for themselves and their families and so they are corrupt and, and what not, then you also have to tell your pastors and churches if they are also doing the same because the tithes are taxes that were used to cater for the people of the church. Acts 2 verse 44 and 45, Acts 4 verse 34 to 37, they gather those monies. People who are rich sell their properties, brought the money and they distributed it equally. That's what tithe is used. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about help you need. Well, if the help is not coming from church that way, that church you are going is not a church. Because the church of Christ, there is help. Because God knows that you need the help. If your family cannot take care of you, your uncles, your parents and uncles and nannies and aunties and nephews cannot help you. In uh, 1 Timothy 2, chapter 5, verse, uh, from, verse, from verse 1 going, talking about how they should cater for widows in the church. But Paul said, let their children and nephews first take care of them. If they cannot, if there is no children or nephew, then the church will take care. Because he said, if anybody cannot take care of his own house, he's not a believer. So if you have a house and that's what we call a church and we cannot take care of ourselves, we should not consider ourselves believers. If a man is there, poor people cannot even have food to eat and some of them are very rich but never care. The pastor has a multi billionaire but he never cares for the poor people. And when the, the poor people need work, he will send them to the to somewhere uh, and, and ask them to even cross Mediterranean and die so that they can bring money to them. These are not Christians. But you call them your churches and your pastors and your bishop. But they are not Christians. But I want to tell you something. You need help. But there's only way you can get that help. Because you can't trust any human being. So Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and will give you another comforter, Paracletus, another comforter. That is a helper, an advocate, a lawyer, somebody who will be with you. Even in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, 27 says that we don't even know how to pray. But the Spirit helps us because we have infirmities. The Spirit helps us in our infirmities. Do you remember the, the important man in John chapter 5? He has infirmity for 38 years. Infirmity. Maybe weak in the body, in some other way around, impotent. He's not sufficient of himself. But Jesus was his helper. 
Jesus help him to be healed. And he said, I will bring another person like me, another comforter, to be your helper also, just like me. Because when he was there, he was feeding them, they were healing their sicknesses, casting a devil from them. But then he said, I'm going. It's good that I go. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. But if I go, I'll ask the father and he'll bring him. But first, you need to keep my commandment. Love each other and believe in my name. What love do you show to somebody? Because everybody needs help. I need help. You need help. Everybody needs help. And it's not about giving your money to somebody. No. It's person, that person in need. The person is not in need. And you give them money. You are wasting it. It's not going anywhere. Because that's not what Jesus commanded. Love is to somebody who has need. It doesn't matter how much faith you have, how much uh, tongues you can speak, and how many prophecies you can. If you don't have this love to help somebody who is in need, they are nothing. Help is love. If you're able to help, then you are a person of love. Jesus is our brother, is our friend. Jesus is our helper, he's our Lord. But when he's going, he said, I'll bring another person like me. That's the Holy Spirit. But you need to obey this commandment. In fact, it said in John chapter 14, verse 23, 24, that somebody who does not believe uh, love me, does not keep my commandment. But if you love me, you keep my commandment, and, and my father will love you, and we will come to you and stay with you. That you have great help. For if God is there, the Holy Spirit is there, the, the Father is there, Christ himself is there, then you will have every help you need. When you cry, get, some, get somebody to help you. That's God himself. But then you have to obey the commandments. But I want to tell you what will cause you to lose the presence of the Holy Spirit and your help. Greetings to the tree. Verse 1 to 3 says, Fully greeting who are bewitched that should not obey the truth. Before your eyes, Jesus Christ evidently said for Christian among you, this I will learn to learn from you. Do you receive the Spirit through the words of the law or by hearing of it? Are you so foolish? That is very serious. If you think you can justify yourself by tithe, by sowing seed, by paying a, a tithe, by paying ten commandments, by uh, uh, Sabbath by this, then you are very foolish because God is saving you by grace. Very foolish. Grace and law are opposite. Because there was a law that God has brought grace. Romans chapter 5, verse 21 says, As sin has ruined our life on today, so much grace reigned by, by righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grace. It's the only antidote for law. Because by the law, nobody can be justified before God. Galatians 3, 11. In the presence of God, you can never be justified by the law. It's grace that can justify you. Don't let anybody deceive you. As many as have the works of the law under the curse. Galatians 3, 10. He who work miracles among you, supply you the spirit and work miracles among you, it's not by the words of the law. It's by hearing faith. Faith is the word. It's come by the word that is preached by the gospel. Faith comes by hearing. We hear them by the word of the gospel. And if you are not ready to hear how God has loved you by giving his own son, you are also not ready to also love others by also giving what you can to them. Stop blagging because you, you you if you think well your 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 deeds your great deeds can save you you have been a foolish person the great answer to three verse one foolish may god which bless you in the precious name of the lord jesus christ may the holy spirit be your help stay in him by staying the grace and god will make sure that you are safe and provided protected in this world, and heal when you are sick. Amen.